Hey guys, Bolchity here. So we're here for a better conversation than last time. I am sorry if I offended anyone because there was no offense of it. It's just me going over storylines. Um, just, just a very confusing. I don't want to watch a single Marvel movie that isn't Spider-Man after this point. Anyways, time to go over Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland. So basically... Tobey Maguire's storyline is basically what we love about Spider-Man's classic comics, which is basically get bitten by a spider. He does have a new thing called natural webbing, which is weird at first, but now we accept it because it's Maguire. Um, but anyways, it's just he gains this power. He thinks he can impress a girl by having the ability to do so, but gets his uncle killed. His uncle says, we're with great responsible basically use your powers for good don't go out overhand and try to use them for whatever means you want he uses this to actually go help whatever new york city citizens he can um but of course with the same birth uh green goblin basically it's just Do norman osborn i need to make a good th product for military use and and it's and it's kind of weird because I'm a little weirded out about his stuff. Basically, it's his company. He gets forced out of it. I understand if he's kind of like a Bruce Wayne where he's kind of an outside standard. He gets the money from it, but he can't get any say saying when he first joins in or is on his way out. But it's just, you know, you're fired. But it's my company. Don't use my name if you're going to... And then he also stupidly does a non-tested thing to try to force it into the military and he gets himself infected and this infection makes him go like double personality insane um, and basically becomes the Green Goblin kills all the people that were connected and said, and said his ideas were bad and then tries to turn Spider-Man to the dark side because heroes don't deserve to live because well, they aren't needed because people are going to hate them eventually. Like, they'll like it you at first, but you're not going to be you're going to be evil eventually. Um the Green Goblin is an amazing character, but it's a weird story. Anyways, basically he makes his own stupid decisions and Spider-Sense saves the day. Um and then basically from this he Gives Norman Osborn, not Green Goblin, not Norman Osborn to Harry Osborn, making Harry hate Spider Man for the fact that he kills his father. Um, instead of saying, hey, the Green Goblin got to him, don't worry, I've handled the Green Goblin, but your father's dead, I'm sorry. That could have kind of cleared up a few things. Um, but, you know, not make it look like you killed him. And then Spider-Man 2 is basically Peter trying to become more of a scientist. So he comes to his one of his most uh, like favorite scientists, Dr. Uh, Otto Octavius. Which ends up just trying to make robot arms that are connected to your spine. Which I understand if you want to create it by your brain waves. Um, and then also you're trying to make this single solar energy... Like this size, which you've bought, done calculations and it becomes a freaking miniature black hole. What? Anyways, basically, all this power, these these mind-controlled arms, they go wrong. They send you evil, which would mean you programmed an evil path to these arms. And then, uh, oh boy, I am starting to decline in this conversation. And then you go and try to kill the, the, the city's hero and also steal and all that just so you finish your project, which you already know is going to go wrong. And you're, and then when Spider-Man tries to stop you from killing many people. Anyways, just. Otto finally comes to his head, say, hey, I'm going to kill a bunch of people if I continue this. Um, and, you know, takes control of his arms to sacrifice himself. 
Um, at this point, we also learn that Mary Jane does learn who Spider-Man is from the unmasking from, from the fight. Um, and so does some citizens, which from the best part of all the movies was the train scene. Whew. Um, but then there's Spider-Man 3. Sorry for people who really thought this was going to be one of those without it. But it is necessary to understand his thing. He is a... Basically, if you go into DC, there's the Gold Age, which is the more serious, but yet lighthearted. Then you have Silver Age, which is the super lighthearted. And then you have Bronze Age, which is do whatever the heck you want. Well, I shouldn't know Bronze Age is starting to do what you want, but there were control controls. And then there was Modern Age, which is do whatever the heck you want. The tr main Spider-Man trilogy is like probably a mixture of Silver Age and Gold Age of DC Comics, which is basically just there is death, but there's funny things like the gold, uh, Silver Age did for you. Um, and then Spider-Man 3 is basically supposed to be a confusion between the two. Um, and then also, if you don't know about the story, it's basically Venom was not supposed to be a part of the movie. The create... Uh, the creator, uh, Sam Raimi, didn't really care about the character of Venom. And he only wanted to introduce characters he actually cared about. But because the studio was like, this is a very popular character I want in my next film. And that's what ruined the movie. And uh, that's ruined our chances for Spider-Man 4. But anyways, basically Harry Osborn is so pissed at Spider-Man at this point. He becomes Goblin himself. Tries to hunt and kill down his best friend. That he does learn um, later on that Spider-Man is his best friend. And then he kind of goes, I don't know what to do in confusion. And then his butler explains to him that it was his spot, that it was Norman's own doing that killed him. Like I said, Spider-Man could have said, hey, Green Goblin got to your father. Could have cleared a few things up. But anyways, we also have Sandman, which is basically just an escaped convict, who actually turns into be, be the killer of Uncle Ben. Weird connection, but kind of like Joe Joe Chill. Or, or actually, no, it would be kind of like the, the Joker. You turn this um, famous villain of Spider-Man, and you turn him into the killer that started it. But um, anyways, he basically is just a robber that tried to pay for his daughter's um, surgeries and medical condition. Um, but of course he is, um, the person who actually went on the run is the one that gets kind of, you know, spotted at first. But, uh, the one who pulled the trigger was Sandman. Sandman is basically trying to escape back to his daughter. But he falls into a testing facility for sand, which all it does is mutate him into sand and allow him to make structures out of sand. Um... And then Venom is basically just Eddie Brock, tries to take over Sp Peter Power's job, um, trying to make mo more Johnny J photos of Spider-Man. Um, also trying to look, uh, make Peter look bad. Um, but uh, basically Spider-Man runs into the alien symbiote. He knows it's, star it's starting to take over his personality um, because... Uh, he starts actually knocking around the people he lo loves. And then he takes it off by the bell. Saved by the bell. And the Venom so Venom is born because Eddie Brock's right underneath it. Um, and basically they're just like, I hate Peter Parker. And I hate Spider-Man. Let's go for him. Um, and then it's just like they... All three try to kill him. But like I said, uh, Harry gets over the fact after it's explained how his father died. And it's a huge battle that ends in Harry's death. Eddie Brock's probable death. And then Sandman le like dusting away like Endgame to uh, you know find his daughter and spend time with her. But I guess eventually... Uh, Sam Raimi did release that he would eventually run into uh, Spider-Man, but he would go out, he'd become rageful, and it would end, end his death. Um, 
So that explains his part in 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 uh, Spider Man No Way Home. But anyways, to to go over a miniature storyline, there is the Mary Jane ex Spider Man. During the first film, it's kind of like I like you, but yet I have other interests. Same with Spider Man Two, there were other interests, but yet they kind of started going towards each other. Third. You're not wanting to be a part of my life like I want someone to. So I'm going to run to your best friend who then starts screwing with me. So I leave him for you. And I believe there's also Johnny J John Johnny Jameson. I forgot. Jameson's son who came back from a, a space exploration that brings the alien symbiote in the first place. And he she runs away from that. Like, gets cold feet, and then goes to Peter, asks to get, you know, start a relationship, maybe get married. Peter runs away from it because he knows he might get her killed. And in the in the way, in uh, No Way Home does show that they eventually found a way to make it work. And then we have Andrew Garfield, same situation, moody teenager this time, though, and he basically says... I don't like you because you're not my real parents. I'm going to disrespect you. And basically that turns into Uncle Ben's death. Then he does have the normal bit by a radioactive spider. Uh, but he does take, I think, Oscorp's um, metal things. He runs out of those, so he has to make his own webbing. Um, in the first one, basically, it's just uh, one of his mentors, Dr. Uh, ooh, I'm trying to remember. It's been a minute. But the lizard, basically, he wants his arm back to help with his kid. So he regrows his arm, but he becomes a lizard because of the lizard DNA. He wants to turn the entire city to lizards. But Spider-Man stops him, but because of his, like, venom, it kills Gwen Stacy's officer, I mean, father, and Gwen Stacy's the girlfriend of Andrew. And basically, because of his death... He wants to stay away, but because of the fact that she's starting to dislike him, he breaks the promise he just made. Then in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, they are actually starting to do a Mary Jane situation where she knows of Spider-Man, but doesn't mind it and lets it roll off her back saying, I know you, what you do, just act like a relationship on our normal days, and I'll try to understand the Spider-Man situation. She also tries to help too, but then there's Norman Osborn, which he dies just because he's got a disease that weirdly kills him like that um, when he was in his older age. But then there's Harry, who's probably like a third or half his age, and he's told you have a deadline to meet because you're going to die here soon. And it's like instead of you know, running around saying, I'm going to die, find the cure, yeah, try to have Spider-Man somehow help you. You know, because the only reason Spider-Man doesn't want his DNA taken is so he gets his DNA taken and understood who he is. Um, but anyways, that's how that Green Goblin's created. And then it's Electro, who's just a nobody from Oscorp that gets turned into somebody. And then that somebody get, is electrocuted, put, pushes everyone down until, you know, he's the menace. And then Spider-Man has to eventually take him down because he's going to fry the entire city. And then goes, tries to save Gwen from Goblin. And kills Gwen. And then I guess from the new way, from No Way Home, we learn that he becomes a vengeful, be brutal beating Batman, Spider-Man. Um, so Spider-Man Noir, basically. And then we have, I guess, we didn't understand it, but the father of Spider-Peter comes back and says, Hey, I'm still alive. There's a lot of things you don't understand. Um, and I'll try to help you understand. And then we go to Tom Holland's universe. I don't like it as much because it's way too campy. 
more than to- Tobey Maguire's. Um, and it's basically, hey, Iron Man's here. He'll give you a new advanced suit with absolutely no need for you to do your own stuff else in the web shooters. Um, and basically, he just finds out that someone's got alien technology from the Avengers. Instead of letting, you know, FBI take it on, he goes on head on, gets in trouble with Iron Man. Well, he does show himself that he's able to get a hold of him, stop him. He does lose his girlfriend because, you know, the girlfriend was the daughter of the Vulture. And the Vulture is just some guy that got screwed over by, like, companies. Um, same thing. Another guy who got screw, screwed over by, by Tony Stark. Basically, after Endgame, um, we have Mysterio. And he's like, well, no, Mr. Stark fired me because I had a difference of opinion. And he hires an entire technology team to make images to, you know, make it look like he was a superhero. Fake it, and instead of Nick Fury find out who he is, which we understand now is because he was a scroll the entire time. And the scroll doesn't know how to identify that there is a lie in that, where Nick Fury normally would have noticed it. Um... But anyways, the scroll is able to, like, like he s- tries to give Spider-Man a new hero. Hey, here's another <sighs> universal hero. But uh, let's just completely put trust in him. And then we have Spider-Man giving all his uh, possessions that Tony left him. To, to I think his name was Quentin Beck, but anyways, he loses to Mysterio, gains he gains all this technology to beat Spider-Man. He almost kills Spider-Man a few times. <sighs> <sighs> and then Mysterio basically ma- makes it open to the public that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Oh, and then Peter Parker's like, "Oh crap! What am I gonna do? Is I'm out in the open." And he, uh, Mysterio blackmailed him, saying he's the reason he died. And then everyone hates him. Some people love him because of his old hero, heroic acts. Um, eventually, the law can't do anything about it because um, there is like flaws in Beck's uh, blackmailing. But of course, people did fall in love with. Mysterio quickly. Um, so there's still public opinion. We do get to see a Daredevil cameo. Um, we have Peter going to Doctor Strange. Hey, make everyone forget about the, uh, like, before Mysterio. Basically, reround the clock of people's memories. Just forget that Mysterio said anything. Um... And instead of, I would have rephrased it as, hey, make it to where Mysterio never said anything. Instead of make everyone forget who I am. Well, like the, like the Spider-Man identity. And it's like, okay, so now you have to change the spell constantly to figure out who you actually care about to actually know about it. Um, which I'm not going to lie, I really wish to... Uh, he would have left Miss um, Aunt May out of it, you know. Stop worrying her, um, and then I'm trying to think. It screws it up. He screws up the spell. Brings in the old villains. Um, they all get mad at Peta. Um, I'll be sorry. And then Peter has to try to cure them all. But of course, then he gets mad that Green Goblin kills Aunt May. Then, you know, he wants to kill Green Goblin. Then we have the old, the, both the um, Maguire and Andrew Spider-Man coming in. And, you know, wise age to tell the tale of them never trying to actually kill someone. Which, it's like, okay, so Spider-Man, old Maguire Spider-Man, 
killed the person who killed Uncle Ben. He technically spider sensed under the way of both, well, of, um, of Green Goblin. He he guilt trip Doctor Octopus. And he technically fully on killed Venom. And then... Well, Eddie Brock. And then for Sandman, we don't know the details of how he died. So he may have killed Sandman. Uh, and then for Andrew, um, Lizard is still alive. Um, Electro died. Oh, God. Come on. It was weird that the Green Goblin, well, that Goblin wasn't brought back. You know, a father-son combo would have been nice. Um, or, yeah, 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 yeah. That Goblin would have been best to bring back, you know, the, the insane of the two. And then, trying to think. He kills May. They all team up, get him cornered, try to cure them all. Then, you know, Green Goblin tries to guilt trip Tom, but Tom's able to, well, McGuire stops him, but he gets backstabbed, and he doesn't die, but he gets injured. They all get sent back home by Strange, but Strange has to remain, remain uh, remove everyone's memory of Peter, which somehow one person's existence uh, repairs all the universe's stitching. Um, and then... He lives his life. He's able to apply for his, uh, I think his GED. Then go to college. He meets up with MJ and, uh, uh, for, the man in the chair. He's the man in the chair. Um, but they go to college without him and to MIT. And then, uh, he has to make his own costume, which is a lot better than his other theory, I'm not gonna lie. I never liked the advanced suits, but his new suit, oh yes! And that's basically it for the trilogy. So you have a bunch of random bullcrap that has the hero win. Then you have one where the hero isn't so, like, I'm gonna save lives, but he still, you know, does what he's supposed to to try to protect most people, but he still has teenage angst. Then we have... Tom Holland, which is, I I have superpowers, Mr. Stark. I can do this. And, uh, basically, he tries to be a superhero, but he kind of overjumps it because he may not have powers, but he doesn't learn anything. He learns the ways of what a hero does and how its life does because of Tony's d death. Um... He also learns there's consequences when Tony takes his suit away. Then he learns from Doctor Strange to, I mean, from Mysterio to trust absolutely no one with his identity or with anything that he holds dear. Then it comes to um, his mainstream, which is basically just, I have to literally let no one know who I am, period, if I care about them. And, and yeah, it's fun. It's fun. And I'm not gonna lie, I can see Peter, like now that he has his own personal time, he can jump through that ED, GED real quick. That way he just comes right back up to where he's supposed to. And MIT, even if uh, Ned does his name, Ned and MJ get a good ways ahead of him. He can take extra freaking classes to catch up with them. He'll basically be in the same year as them as soon as he gets the chance to go up into MIT. And the fact that he's a genius, they're going to accept him. So, he, he didn't lose anything. He just has to rebuild his entire identity. I'm a smart boy that might be a little late to things because I have a superhero identity, by the way. And I tr care about my people and has to restart his new identity which is kind of weird because you have to make a new thing. Because now you can't really say he's going to meet anyone because there's no one, no connections. He's technically not an Avenger. Unless they do remember... I think they remember Spider-Man's objective. So they probably know he's an Avenger. But they're going to sought after him for just being an Avenger. 
where, you know, he may be called in for Avenger level stuff, but I feel like they're not going to hunt him down to be like, hey, we need you for this mission. Um, because he's a, he's a, he's a street level hero. And then it's just, after that, who are you going to make? Because you have both an uncle dead. You have his mentors dead, or not understanding of him. Um, and then it's also weird how they can't, um, you know, they don't make a family connection. They don't have a family tree of Peter. And it's kind of weird. It's like they said that he's kind of covered in all the images he's in. Like, he's he's there, but it's just his face is blocked out. And it's kind of like... So what? So what you're saying is... We're just going to forget the connections we... Can't, like, he, I'm betting he probably does still exist in, like, a family tree, so they do know who he is. Like, his identity, his government identity is still there. Um, but it's just, like, no one has any memories of him. That's probably what it is. So it's just there's no documents. Like, his face is all erased. That way they can't look at him and be like, who's that kid that get, who's, like, not even in the image? Um, and it's just all over the place. Yeah, it's kind of very weird for it, because it's like, you don't have an Oscorp, which means there is no Harry Osborne or Norman Osborne. They laugh at Otto Octavius, so there's no mentor role for him. I feel like if they do, he's going to laugh at Otto Octavius again. But anyways, it's kind of like you have no relationships for Spidey at this point. What are you going to do with Spidey now? But anyways, we're like... Super, I'm super tired. I got most, most of the stuff basically done. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.